Gerbiami svečiai, kolegos, ponės ir ponai. Malonu pasveikinti visus atvykusius į antrąją Vytoto Didžio universiteto Užsienio kalbų instituto organizuojamą konferenciją Darnioj daugo kalbystė, tyrimai, studijos, kultūra. The European Language Council has actually been able to contribute very substantially to the European debate of languages and language policy and language education, teacher training and a number of other uh, related areas uh, for the past 15 years or more. Um, and I'm not sure that there's one single achievement that can be singled out because what we have been able to do has sort of built on what we had done so far and, and move on. But I think that the, the major challenge now is to um, have and continue the dis this discussion and the conversations that we have initiated about how to, uh, how, how to react to the developments on the ground with this very complex picture of multilingual and multicultural Europe and also to see how we can work in higher education with English in combination with other languages. You see my problem is that um, the environment has changed beyond recognition. That is a real problem, okay? If we were still at the state where we were in 1995, we could now say, okay, what can member states do in order to achieve that goal? But this has become next to impossible, and so therefore, Karen and I, what we've been doing here this morning is we've emphasized again and again and again that things vary enormously across the Union, that priorities in member states vary enormously, etc., etc. And, of course, we have to see Europe within a global context. So, in other words, 1995, it was the Union, and now we have a Union which operates in a global context and where regions are emerging just like mushrooms, okay? So in other words, this is a tremendously uh, difficult situation. And so therefore, as Karen was saying, it very much depends on institutional policies, maybe on national policies, etc., etc. And um, it, it's becoming more and more difficult to have objectives for the whole of Europe a reference point for the whole of Europe, etc., etc. I think what we also have to realize, I think maybe uh, we were a bit naive uh, in the past, but it became quite clear today. Language has, or languages have, different functions. So in other words, communication, identity, ideology, power. And um, this, this is, you know, the, the conference we had in Vilnius, made it absolutely clear that is so. People were speaking from completely different points of view. And um, so I think this is another problem. Because of course politicians need to listen to um, experts. Okay? And if experts sing with 10, 20 different voices, then you do have a problem. So in other words, it is probably possible, and Karen made this absolutely clear, that we can design policies for individual higher education institutions. There were certain things in common because of the internationalization of higher education and research, especially in the specific disciplines, that will have to be done in English. But at the same time, as I just said to your French uh, visitor, and as Karl herself said, if you want to transfer new knowledge to society, even to businesses, etc., etc., you would be well advised not to do so in English. So in other words, it's a dual challenge. You have to use a different register. Mm -hmm. You can't communicate as if you were talking to your peers. And at the same time, you also have to use another language. So it, it's, it's tremendously difficult. There again, complexity galore. <laughs>